That's all we're asking people to do is, is just to be compassionate enough, I guess, and, and caring enough to check in on one another and, and, and just make sure we're doing it right. This is a tough business. Life is a tough business. But then life in the military adds on to that. There is a stigma, certainly. There's a stigma surrounded with, with uh, suicide. There's a stigma surrounded with mental health. But stigma aside, we're also talking about a life. A lot of times mental health can manifest in kind of somatic or physical symptoms. Um, that can be a big major like warning sign to you that there's something wrong that we just kind of ignore. You know, if you get a cold, you can tell that you've got cold symptoms. You know, you've got a cough, runny nose, fever, whatever it is. Part of preventative mental health is starting to figure out what those emotions you're going through. What, why am I feeling this way? Um, and so anything you could do for your health overall, including mental health and doing it early, is always best versus waiting till, till after um, the disease has progressed. To be able to reach out to a friend and to encourage a friend to get help when they need it is the biggest gift that you can give somebody. And so, um, you know, just to, to maintain awareness for each other and also for ourselves. I, I think we have to find a way to be there for one another uh, that when someone starts talking seriously about hurting themselves uh, or others, uh, we need to take it seriously. Knowing that we're not all trained clinicians, and so no one's asking anyone to immediately intervene, but to help them find someone, a professional, who can intervene. This is what we exist to do. Like your COs, the you know captains and admirals, they literally pay us to be in the space where sailors can find care, where they aren't stressed, where they can decompress. So the level of confidentiality that you have when you talk to a chaplain is unlike any other provider. Um, so when I say confidentiality, I mean 100% no exceptions. Uh, kind of wraparound uh, services that'll take care of mental health issues, take care uh, if there's something going on with the family, uh, if there are financial issues, financial pressures going on, relationship pressures going on. Um, but then really where we can come in is where, where the person's in the quote red. So there's problems with family, you know, relationships, there's a noticeable decline in functioning. Um, sailors can go to their primary care provider and they can ask for a referral for mental health. The biggest thing is, alongside the challenges of the Navy, I think comes a really unique community. Um, and so what we have to do with that community is make sure that we're taking care of each other. And so it's, it's not always just what someone says. Someone begins to isolate themselves. They're not showing up at the parties anymore. They're not, or when they are, they tend to be alone, yeah? And it's just, it's something off, it's something different. Those are times, I think, where it's really important for us as friends and fellow service persons, you know, to approach them and say, hey, Joe, are you doing okay? So what we should be shooting for is developing community in our workspaces, in our units, wherever it is, so that people can actually open up about what's going on in their life. A lot of times we just forget that sailors have other lives, right? And people forget that we can't do this alone. None of us do it. We all need to walk with someone every once in a while. That's what our brother and sisterhood is about. One thing that we don't hear about, especially in light of um, people who do take their own lives um, when they don't um, seek mental health is all the success stories of people who do get better. Most people want to make it through. They want to succeed. And um, really all it is is that sometimes we need someone to walk with us a little way until we're back on our feet and, and ready for the job again.